to this computer. Okay. Yep. All right. So are you guys ready to go? Yep. Okay. So let's first go over um, how to um, edit the rates and the different multipliers, and then I'll show you guys all the new stuff. Um, so okay. this, we're on the smart rate setting screen and to get here, all the settings in the system, just like in Gmail or any other online ca application, they're in uh -huh. the top right hand corner here. So when you click your name up here, we got our general settings and then smart rate settings. So that's where I'm at now. You notice there's other settings up here too. And depending on your rights you have in the system, you may not have some of these. Um, yeah. But this is how you edit profiles too. You go to profile. So, but we're going to stay focused on smart rate settings today. Okay. Sure. So right now we're on the base rate settings and you can see all these other settings. So we're going to start with base rate and we're in the Ida Vend broadcasting office. You guys have other offices too. So on a lot of these settings that I'm going to show you or these, what we call multipliers, you can control yeah. them in the different offices to have different rates in different offices. Okay. okay. So let's go ahead and just stay focused here on our um, Ida Vend uh, uh, broadcast office. So it's how the system works. It starts with a base rate. And so let's just stay focused on KRCL um, for now. Your rate on that station is $43.50, the base rate. So that's the best way to think about how a base rate works on our system is um, if I were to come to you, John, and I said, hey, I just want to buy one ad on Saturday uh, at 1.30. Okay, it's going to cost you $43. So basically someone's going to buy one ad from you. Okay, it's going to cost you this much. Now there can be discounts or premiums based on how much they buy and uh, these different uh, multipliers that we're gonna go over here, okay? Right. right, Now, does that all make sense there? Oh yeah, so far, so good. Oh. Okay, and there's a way to bump all your rates, um, all of them, so maybe you wanna bump all your rates by a dollar, and it'll bump all your rates, so that way you don't have to go through each one and do it, okay? Um, now, when you go okay. to edit these, you can also edit the multiplier over here. So I right. believe, I'm, I need to ask, uh, real quick, I'm gonna send a chat to the head programmer, but I believe this is so the reps don't see this. Um, and I think that was kind of put into the system because um, it basically didn't show this, so it showed, uh, um, I think at our, our stations, they'd actually bump it up 120%, and they wouldn't actually see that it was bumped 120%. Um, uh, okay. I forget the reasoning for it, but let me, let me come back to that. Um, let me ask real quick. Hold on. Let me just type this in here real quick to our head programmer. That was okay. okay. All right. So let's, we'll come back to this multiplier here. Um, but let's go here over to uh, days of the week. So, um, it's how we determine a lot of these rates that we get. We we get a printout from our uh, our, our traffic system. So right. you know we go and look. You know, so by days of the week we go and see how busy we are on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on. So it looks like you yeah. guys are set up a lot way a lot of the way our stations are. You put your rates up pretty high, but then you want to show that discount on those um, contracts. So it looks like you're discounting pretty well here. So but every yeah. two weeks we go and look at our inventory. So if on Friday we've discovered discovered if um you know friday's really busy well, we might bump that up to 75 percent so it discourages right. the the reps from trying to sell that day so much and sell our other days okay right. um right. all right hold on here's what the programmer said if you want to um is what he's saying about this base rate here on on this multiplier is yeah. uh if you want to modify the base rate with a premium or discount without changing the actual rate usually for a discount on that so that so um, like, they, they will always show okay it will always show a discount okay so if you're not using anything else like because you, you don't have to use these other, other multipliers okay if you just oh, leave them at 100 okay. percent okay. like if you don't want to use days of the week just put them at 100 percent on all of them right, but if right, you still right. want to show those discounts come in here and put those at 50 percent right we actually have sketched out basically like so what Scott and I have done in the past couple of weeks is, is we knew that like our previous general sales manager had really like neglected this process. And for example, like KRPL, that, that's a station like the ESPN Palouse, that's a station that we net like less than uh, $10,000 a month on, yet the base rate was at 75.50. So like we knew some things were way off, but we definitely have sketched out all of our uh, like unit rate multiplier discounts by days of the week 
and day parts and everything. We've actually already got them on paper ready to go to plug them in. Gotcha. Perfect. All right. Well, then, um, uh, sounds like you got a game plan then. Um, if you guys need some help setting up some stuff, you can always contact us down here or give us a call as you're getting okay. all set up. Okay. All right. So we know what that's all for. Let's go to days of the week. That's pretty. Thanks for those breaks. You know, What's that? Actually, well, I think that that was an issue of our rights. Uh, oh, oh okay. so we need to, we need to, I, I guess this would be a good question for you, Ryan. So last week, I think that we had determined that, uh, or a week before last, whenever we set up the meeting, I think we had determined that we didn't have, I didn't have that access. And so remind me, did I, did we need to have our owner send an email to, um, yeah, to, uh, send it to support at influencefm.com and tell them okay. uh, just have your owner say hey this is who I want to be able to do what okay because I think that I might be able to have the level of access to just change it on my own in the profile um if you don't have the rights to get in there now probably not but I mean you can okay. go look in your profile and see if you can okay. but if you can't okay. just you know have them, as soon as they send the email we'll have it done in five minutes so um, it'll be done real quickly. Okay, so uh, days of the week, pretty straightforward, obviously. Um, you know, I don't think I need to go into mu too much there. Uh, let's go length of contract. So, and we call that LOC in our system. And uh -huh. so it looks like if they buy for 13 weeks, you're going to give them a 25% discount. 26 weeks, they get a 30% and 35% if they buy for an entire year from you. Yep. Okay. Then we also have ad blocks. So these are chunks of ads that they buy at a time. This one I like because it really encourages the reps to buy to get the customer to buy on a bunch of stations at once because it doesn't matter what stations they buy on. As long as they buy 10 ads from you, they'll get a 2% discount for a maximum of 10% or sorry, 10 times. So two times 10 would equal 20% off max is what they can get. And you guys have that set per week. So you got 10 uh, ads per week. Uh, if they buy at okay. least 10 ads, doesn't matter what station they buy on, buy on, they'll get at least 2% off. And you can set these per month and per contract. And again, these can be set in different offices on different levels. I like that. I didn't even know that was an option. Yeah, I, I really like that one too. And um, I, I, I personally would probably set those to month um, and put it at something like, hey, you buy 100 ads from me per month and you'll get a, you know, whatever, 10% discount or something like that. But that's yeah. just me. Absolutely. Okay. And then week of the year, um, this doesn't get used that often. We use it fairly often in uh, Lake Havasu because we're a real tourist community. So during, um, and it, it looks like here, for some reason on one one, you guys have that set at 200%. Now that was for 2007. So let's go look at your okay. 2018. And you can see here, there's some major discounts in here. So it looks like someone was using this big time. But you can see you have a lot of discounts on those days. That's interesting. But you if you don't want to use this, just put them out 100%. Right. I imagine that, I mean, this, the, I imagine that we will definitely use this week of the year because, I mean, we're not really touristy, but since we have two uh, pretty big Division One colleges in our market, we get a lot of, you know, craziness around like the football season and stuff. So, that would yeah. Be so yeah, bu bump the rates up then, and then when you're really slow, bump the rates down. So yeah, it's um, yeah. Uh, of course uh, up to you guys, and of course that's all set per station, per office, and per year. Okay. Um, spot lengths. If you're gonna do this, um, so you don't forget, is what I would do is go ahead and set 2019 as well, or just put a reoccurring cal uh, event on your calendar you know, two sure. weeks before the new year comes to go ahead and do those. Cause I, I've seen a lot of people forget about this and, and they go, Hey, you know why my rates all screwed up all of a sudden this year? Well, <laughs> probably cause right. you didn't uh, edit those. Um, okay. Right. So spot lengths, just so you know, you can add as many spot lengths as you want. If you have an oddball spot, it looks like you do. You have a one second spot in there. Um, yeah. But yeah, you can add, add an eight second spot or whatever you want. Okay. And then you can just set count and based on the, what, yeah, what this one I'm, yeah, I'm kind of scratching my head why you'd have the 30 at 95%. Usually we keep yeah. that at 100%. But 
But yeah, no, um, I know why the 30 would be. Yeah, the 30 is their most common product, like most radio stations. So I don't know why it's at 95 percent either. Yeah, but we'll fix that. Um, okay, then we got day parts, and of course you okay. can have as many day parts you you want, name them whatever you want. Okay. Set the times on them. And let me look at something. Morning drive, that looks like about ours. Let's see your overnights. Wow, yeah, the overnights. I'm going to get, show you guys a trick with smart rate with overnights, and you're going to love it. Um, okay. okay. Let me go to shows, if you guys have any shows. No shows in there, but if you do have... Do you guys have, have a show? Any, I mean, we have a lot of local content, but we don't have any of it programmed into the system. Uh, meaning into smart rate, you don't have it programmed? Correct. Okay, let, let's add one real quick, and I'll and we'll do a test okay. contract. Okay, so um, give me give me your most popular show. Our most popular show is probably the Country Morning Kickoff. Is that one word? Kickoff. What's the name of this? And uh, so pretty popular. So again, I'm just yep. putting arbitrary numbers in here, but let's put that like 150 or something. What time does okay. it start? Uh, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. 6 to 10. Okay. Now give me your slower show. Your slowest show. Slowest show. Okay, let's say it is uh, the AM experiment. Okay, maybe put this up 50%. What time does that start? Uh, same day part, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Six to ten. So pretty pretty easy to do. So um and we'll build a test contract uh based off these shows so you can see what those look like. And now we go to packages and one sheets. So these completely um disregard um the the all these uh um multipliers that I showed you before. So let me show you how the packages work. Let's see if you have any in there. Looks like you do. Let's take a look at this. Moonlight radio. Yeah, I, we, okay. these are all foreign to us because we didn't have anything to do with putting these in. So, Gotcha. Well, let me show you what you got here. So it looks like someone okay. put this in, named it. The first date yeah. they can sell it is on this date. So it wouldn't show up as an option for the reps before this date or after this date. So pretty much as soon as 2021 hits, um, or actually February of 2020, they won't have yeah. an option to see this anymore. Now they can't okay. select on the calendar for ads to run outside of these dates. So if the rep tried right. to select ads that went past 131, 2020, the system wouldn't let them. Right. And it looks like you set a custom time on that from 2100 okay. to 6 a.m. But you can yep. also set it to a show or a day part as well. Now, a lot of times, like for instance, a show, you're probably thinking, well, we just did the show one. Why would we do that here? Maybe it's just kicking off and you're, you know, trying to get it going. You know, let's put dollar rates in there on this show you know, and create a package right. based on that. You know, you want to do something like that. But it looks like he was giving away the house here, but it is kind of an overnight deal, right? 2100 out of 6 a.m. So $1.78 if you were to buy that on KVTY and you get a 30-second yeah. ad, and you can run them any day of the week. Okay. Pretty self-explanatory on the uh, packages? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so one sheets. Uh, these are just very broad things. and these I don't even recommend using anymore because we have a better way to do this in our uh, tool chest of toys that I'm going to show you today. Actually, I should probably say toy chest. Um, but basically, it works like this. Put in the name of it. The first date they can sell it. The last day they can sell it. So they won't see it as an option outside of those dates. These are the dates right. that they can choose on the calendar that it runs. And you just simply put in the value in there. And you simply just type in what it is. Really basic. And they don't look pretty. They're pretty ugly, actually. But... Um, it's a way for you to get the money in the, you still have to set these up if you want to do this um, to get the money into the system. So if you do decide to do just like a broad package, like maybe you get, you know, 500 ads a month, uh, you get a booth at our event, you get a banner ad, you get um, 15 mentions on social media, this, that, and the other, you would use something like this, but I have a better way to do that now, um, but up to you. So just so you know, you can do stuff like that. Now, some of the new stuff here. Go ahead. I'm sorry. So the idea would be that we would, like, I guess, let me, this, this is kind of a, I'm trying to figure out how to word this question. If we had programmed all of our features and benchmarks uh, 
in there as as sales one sheet. And one person had a client who purchased it, let's say for 24 months. Would it, if it were taken and sponsored by that particular client, would it remove the availability from it being selected from other account executives? No, like, is what you'd want to do is create a one-off for that type of situation. So say this was samples, what I would do, I would name uh, a, I would name a one sheet sample, but then I'd put like the rep's name behind it and tell them to go, go ahead and use that one uh, for now. Um, that's the only way to do that for now. You can't like, um, yeah, you'd have to so do a one off type deal. So you can't make it like an in, like a available inventory management through that software. No, you mean to where uh, it, it manages your inventory for you? No, it doesn't do that. No, no, I mean, I mean to the extent that you would, it would manage the availability in terms of. Okay, let's say that for one of our stations, like. Oh, Karen, how, how many pack? How many of those packages, or sorry, one sheets you have available to sell? Yeah. Yeah. Would it take it off of the table if it was sponsored by a different client? No, it wouldn't. Um, that is a request we've had before, and it's our it's in our long roadmap of things to add eventually. But no, currently no. Okay. There's a only uh, you're you're gonna have to kind of keep an eye on that. Sure. Okay. Okay. Let's go in the office settings, and I'll go over all the settings. But there's something new in here that you might find intriguing. Uh, this is where you set your agency multiplier. So if it's an agency, if it's marked on the um on the contract as an agency, it's gonna add seventeen point one seven percent. If on one of the day parts, the customer wants a custom day, uh, day part multiplier, um, they're going to pay through the nose. It's going to be 200%. Right. Here's who the emails are going to right. when a new contract comes in. This is yeah. really only meant for uh, owners, and really um, it was requested by our owner of our stations because he was tired of contracts coming through that had no signature on them. Uh, so he wanted to be he wanted to be notified when the rep didn't mark it off as having a uh, signature on it. So uh, if you want to use that, you can. Here's your fine print here. These are your default yeah. settings. I don't think you need. I wouldn't mess with these unless you you know the, this is what the contracts default at, as broadcast or calendar. If you haven't had any issues there, don't worry about them. Um, now this okay. is the new deal I want to show you. Down here, tax. Now, it's not necessarily tax. Obviously, we don't do tax in America. This is for our European and Canadian customers and the VAT. Okay. But the fee here, you now can add fees to contracts. Now, let me explain this for a minute. First of all, the fees are based on per contract. Even though that if you put a fee on the system, the rep can turn it off per contract. Now, you're probably asking, okay, well, what kind of fees you're talking about? Well, we've been having more and more stations going, well, hey, I want to add an FCC reimbursement fee. I'm going, what the heck is that? And they, and they tell me, well, hey, Ryan, you ever got your cell phone bill? And I said, sure. Have you ever read all the fees down at the bottom? I said, yeah, I have. Have you ever questioned them? I said, no. So they're getting like an extra 3% a year um, on their contracts just by adding this FCC reimbursement fee. So if you want to do something like that, you can. And then yeah, also we'll you can have it. We'll do one what? fee that's EMI, one fee that's ASCAP, and one fee that's DSAT. Well, currently it's only one fee that you set up. Um, but yeah, I mean, you could maybe There's call it. Fee, yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. So yeah, I mean, it's a way to get some, you know, if you can put an extra 3% of the, your bottom line with a station you're as big as you guys, a group as big as you guys, that's going to look pretty good at the end of the year. Um, okay, so let's go into, all right, so that's it on the settings. Now, um, I want to show you guys some of the new stuff. Is there any questions on any of that before we move forward? Any questions for you, Scott? I think we're good so far, right? Okay, so let's go into what um, the reps, well, and obviously you guys can do now on contracts. We've added some new line item um, possibilities. And we call it flat rate and also NTR. And there's one more that I'm missing. But let's go ahead and build a contract and let me show you what I'm talking about here. So, okay. and first of all, I've got some new features here. You can, we really improved our task system too. So, tasks are intended for things that are not related to customers, like secretary needs to pick up donuts, or maybe you're working on a tower, or someone needs to be at a, um, at a, uh, a remote or something like that. So, the, and we've made a lot of improvements to this. Um, and it also integrates with the calendar. And this is where your task main interface is. And it also right. is on the calendar too. So um, so let's do a new contract. 
you guys are managers, so you can select any office you want. You can select any employee you want. Give me one of your sales reps, sir. Uh, you can go, the top one's going to be Dennis Tizio. Oh, sorry. I don't, I'd have been, uh, let's do Morgan Carson. Okay. Okay. All right. So obviously select the customer, put in the contract name. And then we're going to do our cash trade bonus. Add a contract line item. Okay. So as you guys know, um, you can name the line item, you can choose how long the spot is that you're selling, but now we have some new options down here, okay? So the new ones are flat rate and NTR. So what's flat rate? Those are for people that are working with a budget. They go, you know what, John, all I have is $500 a month, so that's all I can work with. Okay, go out to December, and we're gonna put that at 1500 bucks. No matter how many ads I add down here, and no matter what day part I choose, it's always gonna stay at $1,500. No matter how many stations I add. So let's just do this and I'll add a second station. And you'll see the price will just stay the same no matter what. So it's always at 1500 bucks. I add a second station. It's always 1500 bucks. Does that make sense? Yeah, this is really interesting. Now, that can be, just like in the system, not sure if you guys are aware, but you can turn all of these features off for anybody in the system. Or maybe just one yeah. of them, maybe go, okay, you know, this person's giving away the house. Let's turn off their flat rate capability. You can do that. <laughs> or maybe you don't want them to do bonus. You can turn that off. So you can turn these off if you don't want someone using right. them. Right. Okay. So let's do, um, we'll do a bonus line now. Or sorry, an NTR. So non-traditional revenue. Real simple, you know, maybe it's a banner ad or maybe you're selling a booth at an event. Let's do a booth. Let's say you have an oh, event on awesome. Scott. This is gonna be awesome. This is gonna yeah, this be is really what cool. I think, think the uh, one sheets are now obsolete because now you can do everything on one contract without yeah. having two different contracts. So um, 11, uh, where am I at? 24. And so again, let's say it's a booth and it's 500 bucks. And we'll say booth at uh, winter event. Call it whatever we want, right? And put the details yep. in there. And then I went ahead and had Alex um, add uh, website for you, event, and social media. That is really cool. Okay. So let's just say it's That's an event. Cool. And now we got a line that will add $500 to the bill, and you have a line that says NTR in there. Okay. Any questions on that, guys? No, I really like that. Good. Okay. All right. So let me show you one more thing. I, I promised I wanted to show you a, um, an idea for you with the overnights. And maybe you guys have thought of this. Maybe you haven't. Who was I looking at? Morgan? Yeah, yeah Morgan. Okay. So I saw your overnights were real cheap, right? And as most stations are. Uh, you know, in, in radio, we're selling fruit, we're selling apples, right? If we don't sell it today, it goes rotten tomorrow. So we want to try right. and sell as much inventory as we can. So let's take a uh, bail bondsman, okay? And we'll just call this uh, winter trouble. Leave it on our 30 second ad and we'll leave it on cash and we'll have it go out until, or let's have it start on October. Uh, just November 1st, why not? And then we'll go to January 1st or January 31st. We'll choose our day part. So the uh, bail bondsman said, all right, you know, I want to run my ads at, from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. because that's when the wipes are uh, listening to the radio. Okay, fine. Uh, even though we don't think that's the best day part form, that's okay. And we'll do, you know, three, three ads a night. Actually, you know what? On Friday and Saturday, we'll do six ads. Right, and we'll choose Absolutely. our station. We'll hit save, and we're going to get our rate pumped out over here. Okay, so they're going to pay nine dollars and sixty-five cents an ad. They got a big discount there. Yeah, again, this yep. is all based on what the current multipliers that you guys have now, and those can be adjusted. They're going to pay three thousand dollars. Now you may go, okay, well, you know that day part's not the best for you, um, but if you really run, want to run that, you can. But here, I have a good idea for you. Let's add another contract line item here. 
And we'll leave it on cash again. We'll have it start in November. Have it go until the end of January. But this time, we're going to do our overnight. And we're going to kill it. And if you think about it, bail bonds, and this also works for a Motel 6 or the motels on the freeway, right? Yeah. But this time, yeah. I'm going to put a ton of ads on this on just about every station I can that I think uh, someone might listen to that needs bail bonds. In. Now, watch their blended rate come down here. Now we're down to $2.28 an ad. They're getting 3,627 ads. From what, I, right. from what I know about bail bondsmen, they make pretty good money. An $8,000 um, investment over three months isn't that much money, especially for how much you're giving them, right? And then you can go and add another one that's like uh, your website banner um, and whatever else you want to do there. So um, selling those, adding a ton of overnights can really bring that blended rate down. And, you know, maybe, maybe you have a customer that's doing a lot shorter um, run here. Maybe they only go for a month and their rate's at like $15 a spot because they're not buying that many ads. And I go, geez, that's a lot. You know, the newspaper, I $100 and I get a quarter page ad. Well, hey, do this right. for me. Buy, buy um, nine overnights and this, that, and the other. So um, getting your reps to really think about the client and getting them to buy more um, and getting creative with this will really help them sell more ads. And you're selling more of that inventory. And what's great, you're not um, messing with the integrity of your, your, your uh, 6A to 8P. Right, you're still getting your rate for these, but it's right. those overnights and all those stations that's really doing a lot down there. Now, one thing you may not be aware of too is that we, the reps can actually see where they can get the discounts, and that's down here in the view of the multipliers. So as they're building right. their contracts and they're going, okay, that's getting really expensive. They can come down here and look at, okay, the base rate's this much. These are all my discounts for the days of the week, the lengths of contracts, right? Yeah, and then I have my ad blocks which we talked about so if they buy 10 ads look at two percent discount up to 10 times for 20 percent off per week and then here's all my day parts so i can go oh, okay it's a bail bondsman okay overnights oh i can get them a big discount there i'm going to put a bunch of ads on the overnights okay yeah, that, yeah we we actually really like the idea of the refs being able to see the multipliers because like you just said then that gets them thinking about okay, what's the best deal that I can work for this client that still meets with the, the targeted date, you know, the best targeted day part and the best targeted station, you know, for their, right. for their graphics. So I, I love that they can actually see the multipliers and use it to help the, them strategize. Good. Um, what traffic system are you guys using? Marketron. You are. I'm not sure if you guys are using our feature or not. I mean, it's been around forever, but um, are you guys... Uh, our system integrates with Marketron to where you can import your contracts into Marketron yep. as soon as you approve them? Yep, we are using the auto import feature and we have been for uh, just over, well, between two and three years, I think. Okay, good. All right. And then also you can collect e signatures too on contracts now. Are you guys aware of that? Uh -huh. Okay, so is how this works, your reps, and, you know, e-signature usually works with someone that you do business with for a while. You know they're going to sign it. You know, I doubt you want to do an e-signature with a new client. Um, uh -huh. But for your clients that you know that you've done business with that are going to sign it, have your reps create yeah. the contract, and they save it as a draft. And once they do that, they click e-sign, and then it goes to the customer. They e-sign it. Once they e-sign it, it comes back to you guys, shows you as a PDF shows you that it's been signed. It also goes to the rep, lets them know it's been signed, and it also goes to pending contracts for you guys to approve or reject it. Oh, very nice. That's very cool. Yeah. Now, one last thing that we, we've built into this recently is the ability for traffic to reject a contract. And at least at our stations, you know, managers make mistakes. Even when it gets to traffic, they can now come in here and the traffic director looks at it and goes, okay, that's not going to work. They can click on send back and send it back to you guys. Gotcha. Okay. We also have a telemarketing system built in, guys. Um, you know, uh, we're, we're running kind of low on time here. We're at 40 minutes. I've only got about another five, 10 minutes here. But if you okay. guys ever want some time to kind of go over all the new stuff we have in here, I don't know how much you guys are using our calendar, but we got a ton of new features in the calendar that really – uh, make sure your clients are being taken care of, and it gives you some great reports. Are you guys currently using the calendar? Yep. Are yeah, you guys getting the reports that come to you every night? Oh, yeah. 
Okay, so you've seen all that, but there's a lot of new features in there. Real quick, let me just show you some of the new stuff. And maybe you're aware of this or not, but uh, let's come down here. Um, we call this pending actions, and it looks like you guys are, well, you're not clearing out your pending actions. Uh, the pending well, actions you, is... Let me put in here for a second. Uh, since you don't have a whole lot of time, I really know how... I don't really understand how to uh, uh, adjust all the multipliers and uh, adjust all our pricing and change all our pricing. We just push edit on that. We just push edit? Yeah. You know how to do that? Thing? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. We just don't, what we figured out when Ryan and I were chatting a couple of weeks ago is we just don't have those permissions set up for you and I right now. So it's just the permission. It's just the permission. Uh, how was I able to do it before somehow? You were able to view it. I don't think you were able to edit it before. Oh, because I know I could highlight it. We'll go into your profile okay. and take a look. But okay. Um, I would be surprised because what Ryan and I discovered is the permissions just weren't there in order for me to edit it. Okay. And that's and that's actually how we started the conversation. Okay. So. Okay. Good. Okay. We're finished here at this end talking, so go right along with what you were saying. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, it looks like that while you're using the calendar, you're not taking full advantage of your guys' um, uh, really your ability to sleep better at night. And that's why we built this pending action system. Um, yeah. it, it's the red flag machine. It's the artificial intelligence we built into the system. Um, but before I go on, this is part of it over here on the pending action is what the system does is what you currently have is warns after appointments been scheduled more than three times. Now, why is that important? Well, why would a rep reschedule an appointment more than three times? Well, maybe there's some client neglect going on, or maybe it's a new sales rep that's just simply not doing their job and they're just rescheduling to try and look busy. So the system yeah. lets you know when that happens. Warn if uh, an appointment isn't completed after one day. So this warns you if they don't fill out their calendar, they have 24 hours to say what happened on that appointment. If they don't, it lets you know that they're not filling out their calendar. They didn't put in the, um, uh, the outcome and they didn't do their next appointment. So that one's pretty important too. We want them to fill out our calendar. That way, all the reports you get are complete. And when you send them to your manager and your manager gets them, they're not asking you a million questions. They're all right there on the report. Or when you go in to talk to your manager, you have everything right in front of you. Um, and then warn if a customer hasn't been seen in 30 days. Of course, all these can be edited, but if your clients aren't seen every 30 days, it's gonna let you know. Okay. One other cool thing here, and this is an office setting. So I mean, what office are you? You guys manage all the offices, right? Yep. All right. So it's set to 50% and that sounds good. So when they go to put in a closing call, if they're not at least 50% confident, it's going to let you know. And it goes to this pending action section over here and says, Hey, so-and-so is not at least 50% confident. Now we feel that one's really important. You've probably gotten emails on those. Have you guys gotten emails on those? Yeah, but not very often. Okay. So um, is what that does is, you know, you figure the rep goes through the time to do the cold call, the CNA, uh, spec spots and chasing down the customer, trying to track them down. You know, they got like nine, 10, 11 hours into trying to close this customer and they're not very confident on that closing call. You know, it's probably advantageous for you guys as managers and your numbers at the end of the day to jump in to either help them, go talk to them and say, Hey, you know, I, I see you're asking for $24,000 from the auto dealer down the street and you're only 25% confident. What's going on? Well, you yeah. can give them some ideas on how to sell them, or you can go with them on the closing call. You guys have better closing capabilities. You can also break the rules. Right. You can be like, you know, talking to the uh, auto sales guy and saying, all right, you know, I know our, uh, 10 bucks a spot, this, that, and that. What if I threw in a banner ad on our webpage, this, that, and the other? You guys can do stuff like that. So that's why those are important. Um, now, this is the pending action. This is our artificial intelligence in the system. This is the system that goes, hey, guys, there might be something fishy going on here. And it also notifies you of other stuff that you may want to be notified on to keep reps from stepping on each other's toes. For instance, Mary, she created this customer. Do we want to allow that? Sure, approve it. Do we want to reject it? Click on that. It has you put in a reason why. It emails Mary and says, hey, you know, someone already owns this customer. Uh, you know, and the system stops them from creating duplicates too. It lets them, but it warns them before right, they do right. that. So, Right, right. There's that. Um, and then here's your customer out seeing in 30 days. So you can look at some of these and you can go, wow, 30 days. She hasn't seen sell events. They spend a lot of money with us. What's going on here? Send her a warning. Say, Hey, come talk to me Monday and tell me why you're not seeing sell events. 
yep. and so on. So there's a lot of things that can run. Most of these look like they're about 30 days. And if you want, we can go ahead and clear these out in bulk. And you can do them in bulk too. Maybe go, okay, and approve. But you got 3,000 of them. So if you want to start fresh, we can do that for you. But here's all the things that come here and warn you of something that might be going on. And real quick, before I go through all the things that come uh, that warn you uh, that's going yeah. on, you can sort by office and you can also sort by a single employee too. But when they try to get a, uh, rid of a customer, so send them send a customer to the open prospect list, it goes to you first. Now that one's important Correct. because, you know, uh, if uh, someone has bad debt and that rep just, you know, doesn't have the courage to go ask for that money because the, the person's yelling at them or whatever it is, it, it doesn't right. let them get get out of that. When they merge a customer, it comes here for your approval. Now, the reason we have that is that uh, a rep may not realize there's two Walmarts in the system and you want two, two Walmarts in there. Uh, transfer right. customers is for history purposes. Now, delete activity. This one's pretty important. Now, on this one, this is the only way they can get out of doing their calendar um, when they delete an activity. Now, is what we do on these, we want to make sure they have a future um, appointment set before we allow them to delete this. So it looks like Dennis, he's trying to delete this, and it was a closing call. What? You're deleting this? And he said right. it's already done. He had to put in a reason why. Okay, fine, fair enough. Um, so right. maybe you would approve this, but I wouldn't is what I would do. It's a closing call, right? Fine. It's done. That's good. But what's your next step? You have nothing planned in the future. Right. Uh, so it's a, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would reject this and go, well, that's great that you're done. And I'm, I'm glad you sold this account, but what's your next step? Go ahead and create a, an appointment for your next step on this. You know, write some ads maybe. So or that's, least, uh, yeah. One real handy feature there. And you notice on all these two, you can transfer the customer away. So if you're tired of this rep doing the same thing over and over and over, transfer it to someone else. Yep. Um, when they send a customer to the trash, mean they're they're out of business. That's the only reason you should ever send a customer to the trash. Delete, delete a reoccurring appointment. Now, these are really important. Um, we have a Ford dealership here, here in town that spends a ton of money with us. And you guys don't have yeah. any. That's good. Um, and our, one of our sales reps has lunch with them every Tuesday at noon. Okay. And if that gets deleted, I want to know why, what happened? You know, why are you not meeting with Chuck at the Ford dealership every Tuesday at noon? Right. When they protect an account or make it seasonal, it comes here for your approval. I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but you can make accounts seasonal and the system won't nag the rep for not going and seeing that client on a regular basis. Yeah. Now when they reschedule, reschedule frequently. So if they reschedule more than three times, if you recall, that was in the settings over here under general settings. You can change it to three, four times. But, you know, for instance, this one, she's rescheduled this appointment more than three times. And it doesn't, if they reschedule on the same day, it doesn't count. It's only when it goes to a different day. So you may oh, want to okay. go on here and go, send her one and go, hey, Cheryl, come talk to me and why can't you pin down Planet 3? Come talk to me tomorrow and let's figure out uh, why you can't seem to pin them down or what's going on. Why do you keep rescheduling that? Yeah. So all these are, are reschedules. Um, incomplete appointments. So they're not filling out their calendar. They're not saying what happened on their calendar and what their next step is. So quite a few here. Yeah, I see a lot. Yeah. So, um, you know, especially some of these are like, that are like closing calls or whatever. That's a copy call, copy call. Copy calls are still important. You know, why didn't you go in and, you know, what's going on right. there? Right. Um, and again, you can send a warning. You can transfer the customer to someone else. If you don't care, just approve it. When they have low closing confidence. Now, this one I'm interested in. And you don't yeah, have any. That's good. Well, I think the reason why is because when that feature first got into the system, I don't know, it was probably three or four years ago, The all of our reps just started putting in 100% confidence on everything. Wow. That doesn't yeah. give you... Uh, you know, see, the thing with that... Is that, yeah, be like, guys, we're just trying to help you out here. Just be honest on this. Because if you're, it, you know, it's an easy way for you to raise your hand and say, hey, I need some help here. I think the reason was the, it was it had to do with some really poor advice from our former general sales manager who said that he was like, he was sick of seeing people's confidence levels at 25% and felt that they weren't preparing themselves. So everybody just started putting in 100 <laughs> Okay, well, you know, there's always a way to game the system. But uh, yeah, well, anyways. His advice was just so poor that people are not using the system to the best of its ability because of that. So we, that's something we can fix. 
Right. Okay. So you know that's there now. Yeah. But one thing that's yeah. cool on these, you get an email on these. Um, so that's cool, right? But when you come yeah. to the pending yeah. action section here, on the action button over here, it'll have an invite self. And you can click on boom, and it'll put it on your calendar for you. Nice. Now, when they claim or, or create a customer, it also lets you know. Again, the system, uh, they shouldn't, they should very rarely be creating customers. So she's claiming all these, and that's typically fine because the system tells you if someone already has that customer. But when they create right. customers, you may want to take a closer look at these, right? Because um, the system will let them create a duplicate, but it'll, it'll tell them, hey, before you create this, know that this is already in the system. You should probably search for it and claim it because then they miss out on all those contracts where we're from the past, the production orders and all the history. So um, that one I'd keep on. And then customer not seen recently. This one's pretty important, probably one of the more important ones. You know, all these clients haven't been seen in 30 plus days. Right. And that's looks like that's a bulk of what's going on because probably because they're not completing their calendar, but um, right. you know, especially the bigger clients, you know, wait, hold on. You haven't seen uh Saint hardware implement. They spend $3,000 a month with us. Why? Right. Okay. So um, that's all I got for you guys today. Again, if you want to check out the telemarketing system and some of the other toys we have built in and we're coming out with a really great dashboard too, in a couple weeks, that's going to give you a lot of um, information that, uh, let me see if I can pull up a screenshot of what you're going to be able to get. But again, the, the reps have to be using the, the, the calendar for this to work. Um, I'm trying to find a, a screenshot of what we got going on here. What's coming soon. Where is that at? Where did I put that? Give me just a second here. Sure. I know I have it. Is it a PDF? Hmm. Maybe I should install my desktop. Maybe it's still there. Hmm. I don't know where the heck it went. It should be in my desktop folder. Um. Well, this is driving me nuts. Well, uh, here we go. Here's what you'll start getting here soon. So, oh, uh, asks this week. You got your sales book, how uh, close you guys are, 2018 goals. All your asks for the, today, asks for the future, what your weekly sold is. Fair and then there's, an, there's another screen that you'll get as well on each individual sales rep. Month over month versus billing last month how close they are to goal, where they are next month, and their pro uh, progress against their annual goal. That's fantastic. Yeah, and just so you guys know, one one last thing, and then I gotta get going, is um, um, you may wanna check and make sure all your sales reps' uh, budgets are up to date. And if you go into report settings here. Yeah. I mean, we can set their good. We are going to get those set for 2019, but I didn't even know that was a feature of this program. Yeah, the the what I was just showing you those uh, um, the the dashboard that's not quite here yet. In about two weeks, you'll have that. But you might as yeah. well go get their make sure their goals are are all set up. Now, really important on the goals, um, make sure once you get them set up, you hit save. On um, you scroll to the right and you hit save. Okay. And make sure you do the different offices. Once you set up the nope. personal goals, it'll automatically do office and company for, for you. That's fantastic. Now, why is, what's the difference between billing and budget on the right-hand side? I don't know. <laughs> to be honest okay. with you, I, I don't know. Um, uh, again, at, at the end of the days, day, guys, I'm just a computer nerd. Um, uh, okay. Billing versus budget. Uh, let's see here. Because, I mean, billing oh, to me would be $3 on the book. Budget to me means... Budget means like uh, expenditure where billing is revenue. So. Let me look at our stations here. So let's look at Leah here. So it looks like she has 20 to up to 25 grand on her yeah. budget. Let's look at that compared to billing here. Okay. Huh. Can I edit these? Are those actual dollars booked against projected? 
I wonder. I don't think so. Um, I, you know what? Hold on. I'm going to patch someone in here. Give me two seconds. Okay. Sure. To me, your budget always means what you expect to get, and billing is what you get. Exactly. That's what I presume. Yeah. yeah. I've been all through the videos numerous times, they have, and I. Alex, you there? Yeah, I'm here. John, you there? Yep, yep we're here. Okay, Alex, go ahead. I'm, I'm on the um, budget screen where you set, set the budgets per rep. Explain uh -huh. to us the difference between budget budget and billing. Uh, so the budget would be like whatever your, you want their budget to be. So if you want them to sell you know, $10,000 this month, you'd put in $10,000. Um, okay. The actual is um, – you don't have to put those in if you're importing the – uh, projections from traffic, those will fill in automatically, but if not, you can uh, enter them in manually as well. Oh, wait, so wait, wait. So this is all um, comes in automatically when they import their projections and collections, Alex? The actuals do. They have to obviously put in whatever they want their budget to be, but yeah, the, the projections so billing. Our billing is actual dollars booked, but those have to be at, or imported from Marketron, is what you're saying. Yeah, yes. I mean, you can enter them in manually, but if you're importing projections, they will just automatically fill in there. I think you guys... I don't know. Let me look at your projections real quick. Yeah, you guys are importing your projections. I don't know if you guys are aware of this report, but projections and collections are all in here. This is... Okay, we'll take an audit of that because some of that stuff is going to be... I, I appreciate you bringing that up because, like I said, I didn't even know that that was part of a a, a projection thing that we had programmed in. Yeah, this is real nice because it's all in one place. And the reps, um, if their settings are set, they can only see their stuff. So not everybody yeah. sees everything. Um, but uh, also you can look at uh, summary by station, details. There's a lot of reports in here. But um, And make sure you select the sales rep on this one. Right. Yeah. Well, anyways. Um, so yeah, there's that for you. Make sure the projections and collections are getting imported. Now, uh, the biggest thing we run into when someone goes to change this, is they'll import the file and go, okay, so-and-so is not showing up. You gotta make sure, and uh, when you guys go to do this, just get a hold of us, but you go to traffic import, and you gotta make sure that the user's set up to match up the user ID that's in the um, their traffic system. Okay. I can talk to traffic about that. Yeah. Um, uh, that's that's all we got today for you guys. Um, thanks, Alex. I appreciate it. All right, you're welcome. Goodbye. Yeah, so I we really appreciate this, and uh, we are going. We're going. We have uh, a lot of work ahead of us, but maybe we can reconnect in uh, maybe 60 days or so, and if we have any more questions, uh, maybe schedule another time with you here in a couple months. Yeah, just reach out to us. Do you want us to clear out your um, pending actions here? Or do you want to run through the uh, most recent ones yeah. first? That's okay. We'll go through and work on those. But it, it, it'd be good. You know, we're doing training with Scott. He's a new manager for us. So uh, we'll take some time to work on this. Okay. And I did record this, so I will upload this so you can uh, show it to anybody you need to show it to. Awesome. I really appreciate yeah, let that. Let me ask you a quick, dumb question before I. Uh, before you leave. I have, I've been trying to learn your system. There's, you probably have 35 to 50 videos on YouTube that I've been going through over and over and over and over again. And I still can't, I, I'm still having a lot of trouble with your system. Do you have a single, like a video that will take me through in order through the whole system to try to train me and get the stuff in my head? Not really. I mean, I can do a personal training with you. The problem is there are lots of parts to the system and depending on whether you're a manager or not. Um, unfortunately, managers have a, a lot bigger task than anyone else because um, there's all the settings and whatnot. What, what in particular, what part of the section are you, uh, system are you having troubles with? Well, let's see. I was having, 
I was having a lot of trouble with the smart rate section. And okay, well, I, I think we solved that today, right? But uh, I'm not sure yet, but I think so. Okay. I, I think yeah, so because the system still gets me awfully confused because I, I just – I can't sit down with anyone side by side and go through it and someone can explain it to me and I can ask questions and we can back up and so forth. Yeah. You know, well, you can it, always it, get, I can always do it. I'm more yeah, than happy this, to do as many trainings as it takes. If you want to do an hour a week, that's fine with me. Two hours a week, that's fine. But if you ever just sit there on like one or two things right here, we, we take a lot of pride in this. We, we answer this in under 10 seconds guaranteed this or you can call us too so we're, we're here at 5 a.m so uh reach out to us and we'll, we'll help you out okay all right well i'll just bug the hell out of you until i get through this mm -hmm. <laughs> perfect okay okay and we appreciate okay. it Robin. thank you we appreciate yeah, thank it you, thank you so much you're welcome take care guys bye, bye. you too.